Shalom and peace to everybody. Shalom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank you all, man, for enabling us to be able to come out again and, and celebrate and be a part of his Sabbath rest today. Thank the Lord. Our scripture reading is coming from John chapter 17. We're going to read 1 through 11 verses. And he that has an ear, let the Spirit speak to your hearts. These words spake Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifest thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept my word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in thee. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Thank the Almighty for his glory. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, which is Jesus, of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. But today, y'all, is going to be a pretty good lesson. I'm going to give you the title of the lesson is The Day of the Lord. The Day of the Lord. This day is not no regular day as most of the people inside of the churches uh, really don't understand this day. It's not, a, it's not Sunday. It's not the Sabbath day. It's a day that the Lord is going to give destruction to this earth. And I hear most people in the world, they're not really prepared for this day. Everybody prepared for the coming of the Lord. They waiting on Jesus to come back. Some Sunday Christian waiting on them to come back to rapture them off before this day happened. Even some of the Israelites are not prepared for this day. This day is a very uh, terrible day. And if you're not hid in the wilderness, in the place of safety, it's going to be hell and high water to pay. And I just want to make sure that we all understand how important it is to be in the place of safety at this time. So God can hide us from this day. We're going to need some, some God to hide us from the day. If we don't ever talk to you all about this day, we always talk to you about the goodness of God. Don't want to worry about it. God is good. We understand that part. But we need to find out how terrible he is. It's an it's a even kid. Even, it's got to have a balance with it too. And we hear the word all day long. God is good. God is good. But we never hear about this day which is Jesus is going to come back. Before he come back, he's going to let these people of the world start destruction upon, upon the earth, which is the tribulation. So we're going to start in Revelation chapter 1, in verse 1. Everyone would go through this day. Everyone. 
If you ain't prepared mentally, you'll be shook. Your faith will be shook. Especially if you miss the wilderness. Like I say, the day of the Lord. Believe me, I'm waiting on the kingdom of God. I can't wait till the kingdom of God. We get in the kingdom. But this day right here really kind of scares me a whole lot. And y'all gonna understand through the lesson the reason why I'm scared of this day. I want to make sure my mind is right, in the right place, and I want to make sure my body is in the right place to hide me from this day. But he always give his prophets or his people a way of escape. And we need that. Revelation chapter 1, we're going to start with verse 1. Let's break this day of the Lord down so we can understand what we must do to, to prepare for this day. Everybody telling you about the coming of Jesus. But before Jesus get here, believe me, we got to go through seven destruction, seven trumpets that are going to destroy this world. world. Amen. Verse 1, go ahead, brother. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. Mm -hmm. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the words of Jesus Christ to reveal. Revelation is to reveal something. But most of the Sunday churches and most of the people do not like to read the book of Revelation because it scares the daylights out of them. And they think they're going to be raptured out of here before this hit. The tribulation period, you're going to be here. I'm going to be here if we're still living. But he's trying to reveal something to us through the servant John. Go ahead. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And of all things that he saw. So John, so Jesus, through the hand of the angels, is taking John to the future. And he's going to share with him something that he must write in this book so we can be prepared. Which is this day of the Lord? Go ahead. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Wait a minute. He said, blessed if you read it. Most people don't even read the book of Revelation. Don't read it. They're scared of it. You got to be blessed if you read it because it's revealing a secret that most of the world do not know. <laughs> Go ahead. And keepest those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. He said to keep it. When you read it, you got to keep it. Jump down to verse uh, 9. Go ahead. I, John, also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Yes, sir. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was an isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. John was out on the island called Patmos to get the instruction from God. A lot of times, God took the prophets away so they, can, so they can hear him, so they can write and understand what's going on. And he tells the John about this day right here. Verse 10, go ahead. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. It's not talking about Sunday. It's not talking about the Sabbath. This is talking about a great and terrible day where God is revealing to John what he will write. Go ahead. Say it. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Yes, sir. And what thou seest, write in a book. He said, what you see, what I'm showing you, you write this in a book. Because he want to make sure that we see this through the scriptures before it hit the earth. So we won't be shook in this day. Go ahead. And send it unto the seven churches. So he sent it to the churches. The churches. The church is supposed to be reading this. But they're not reading this. Go ahead. Which are in Asia. Mm -hmm. Unto Ephesus. And unto Smyrna. And unto Pergamos. And unto Thyatira. Mm -hmm. And unto Sardis. And unto Philadelphia. And unto Laodicea. Each one of these churches got the message and they got the message from John and they went down and they delivered to the members. They told them what was about to come to pass. What was about to come to pass? And that's what we're doing today. We read it so we can be blessed and be prepared in the mind. If you study something, you understand something, when it hits you, it won't shake you as much. You might be a little fearful, but it won't shake you as much. You'll know where to be and where what not to do. 
Now let's go to Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2. Not Zechariah, but Zephaniah. I want to make sure you understand in detail, you do not want to be out of pocket on this day. What I mean by out of pocket, you do not want to be nowhere in this world but one place at this time. And that's the wilderness. Even Zephaniah was saying, man, you need to hide me from this. He told all the prophets, all the prophets read, all the prophets had this vision. And he showed each one of these prophets through their generation. So they can write for us so we can be prepared. But you ain't going to hit these scriptures in these Sunday churches. And bring this spirit down. Okay. We're going to hit them in here. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. I'm trying to prepare. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. He telling you to gather yourself together. Like we gather today on the Sabbath day to hear the instructions of the Lord. Go ahead. Before the decree bring forth. Yes, sir. Before the day pass as the shadow. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. You see what he said? Before the fierce anger of the Lord, this Jesus' anger, come upon you. And before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Gather yourselves so you can come together, read about this, get your head right. Study for this test that's going to hit this world. Go ahead. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Seek him. How do you seek him? He ain't tell you to go looking out there in the world and say, where is Jesus, where is Jesus? No, you seek him out the book so you can understand what he want us to do at this time. Go ahead. Which have wrought his judgment. Mm -hmm. Seek righteousness. Yes, seek sir. weakness. Yes, sir. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Zephaniah said, yeah, it, it may be you be hid in the day of the Lord. You want to be hid in the place of safety at this time. There's nothing, no movie can depict this, no script, no play, anything can depict what's going to happen on this earth. Wow. You need to be hid on this day, the day of the Lord. Let's get some detail on this day. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 14. We just understand this great day. And believe me, if you're a New Testament reader, you ain't going to get this. You got to deal with the whole book. We deal from, from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. we do, we're talking about the day of the Lord. And most of the people in the world are talking about, I can't wait till Jesus come back and get us. This world is just so terrible. Believe me, mm -hmm. this ain't terrible right now. This is not terrible. That's right. This is paradise right now compared to what's going to happen. You're going to see what's going to happen. This is paradise right now. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, go ahead. The great day of the Lord is near. Yes, sir. It is near. And hastes greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. He said, the mighty man shall cry bitterly. He said, this great day is approaching. If you want to understand anything about prophecy, these cats right now around the world are talking about peace, peace, peace. They're trying to get all these treaties up. And believe me, when they say peace, peace, everybody going to be in perfect harmony. The Jews are going to be with the Christians. The Christians going to be with Muslims. And then all of a sudden, sudden destruction going to hit. Because somebody going to break the peace treaty. Somebody, you know, <laughs> them Gentiles always break the peace treaty. But listen, this is the day of the Lord. Go ahead. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. Yes, sir. A day of wastes and desolation, a day of darkness and gloomness, a day of clouds and thick darkness. You understand what he's saying right here? Of distress. This day is a distress. You ever been in a place where it's totally dark with no lights and you can feel the dark and you walk and you can't see nothing. No flashlight, no light. This is how it's going to be. Go ahead. This is what he say here. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities. Yes, sir. And against the high towers. Mm -hmm. And I will bring distress upon men. Yes, sir. That they shall walk in black, walk walk like blind men mm -hmm. because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dawn. Because there's going to be so much darkness and pain upon the earth that men will be walking around getting killed or getting hurt. We're talking about women too. All of it is going to go through a distressful time. 
If you're not in a place safe, you're going to see this. Can't no money deliver you from this. Can't no gold. Nothing can deliver you from this. Amen. Only way you're going to get delivered is in the place of safety. Read on. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. You see what he's talking about here? People are always talking about money, 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 money. This money, it can't deliver you. Money is going to be worthless at this time. Worthless. People running after this money. They killing for this money. But this time right here, nobody's talking about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is very distressful. Because most people today do what? They use their money to buy themselves out of trouble. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know Israel, we got no money. Go ahead. But the whole land shall be divided by the fire of his jealousy. Wait a minute. The whole land? This talking about the whole entire earth going to be, uh, be about destruction at this time. Whole entire earth, but only one place he going to protect. Go ahead. For he shall make even a speedy radiance of all them that dwell in the land. But he's going to destroy the evil one. He's going to let them destroy themselves. And, and when the Lord come back, <clears throat> he's going to do some destruction too. Let's look at it. Let's see in detail what he's talking about the stress. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6 and start at verse 12. We need to know. Uh, people right here walk around here planning like they're going to live forever. And that prophecy is jumping off the page right now. Revelation chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 12. When God gave it to Jesus, Jesus gave it to his servant, which is which he gave it to his angel, which is which is the Holy Spirit, he gave it to his prophets. So we would know. And he told us some detailed things about the day of the Lord that most people not read. The only thing they think about is going to heaven. Going to heaven. Or going to the kingdom of God coming down. No, you got to go through this first. Everybody. Revelation chapter 6, we start at verse 12. Go ahead. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Yes, sir. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Where have you ever seen it? It's earthquake, meaning the lands are not even stable. The sun ain't giving its light. Even during the day, it's dark. You've never seen nothing like this. Go ahead. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, mm -hmm. even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Even the stars, because God is going to roll back this heaven. Up there in the third heaven, you're going to be able to see him and Jesus. He's going to destroy all the clouds, everything, the stars. You're going to be able to see Jesus and God in the third heaven. Go ahead, he's going to take and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Mm -hmm. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Why did they move out of these places? Earthquakes all over the place. He moved that out of place so you can see. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the den and in the rocks of the mountain. Oh, now why they hid themselves? Hide themselves? Because they thought it was a lie. Most of these people in the world think it's a fairy tale book. That's right. And when they hit, when those scrolls, when they, when they have it depart away, the stars are removed, all the certain you're going to see the Father and the Son and the man just sitting right there looking. And most of the people going to think those are aliens. Because they ain't reading the book. We're going to say, okay, I'm waiting on this right here. We're going to see it roll back. We ain't shaking because we've been taught. Look at these cats trying to hide themselves. You can't hide from the Lord. Go ahead. And said to the mountains and rocks. Look at how they talking to the rocks in the mountain. You tell this man, he said, when you, when you are fearful, you say anything, all kind of crazy stuff. You talking to a rock. Fall on us. Go ahead. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see what I told you? Jesus is the Lamb and him that sitteth on the throne, that's the Father. They're going to see. When that opened up, when that sky opened up, they're going to see him up there. I'm like, oh man. And guess what? They're going to say, boy, he's black. 
He's black. He's going to look just like us. Understand that. Even the angels are black. I say black, this brown. You're going to say, have color. They're going to say, man, somebody lied to us. Understand this going to happen. Go ahead. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Who going to be able to stand in this day? People are going to be running for fear. Let me show you about this distress again. Let's go um, to Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. I just want to make sure y'all understand the day of the Lord is nothing to play with. Sometimes I think, well, I don't even want to be alive when they here. Ain't trying to wish no early death on myself, but what? You're going to take some faith. And you got people in this world who say, I can't wait till Jesus comes. I can't wait till the end of the world. No, oh, you don't need to be saying that. You don't understand the scripture, you're talking like that, you're thinking like that. You better hope it'll hold off as long as it is. <laughs> Let me show you. Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. Don't desire this day. Verse 18, go ahead. Warn to you that desire the day of the Lord. What did you say here? Warning to you who desire the day of the Lord. Go ahead. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Now he's telling you, this is so much darkness, not light. Meaning that you got to understand this. As we see it now, the lights on the streets, the animals are in the zoo caged up. They got all kind of pests controlling all this stuff. They control this stuff. At this time right here, nothing controlling the animals. Nothing controlling the elements. Nothing. And he's going to show you what's going to happen to the men who walking upon this earth at this time. That are not in the place. Mm. Go ahead, this is what he say right here. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, yes, sir. or went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. It's going to be times where they ain't going to have no type of law governing the animals. They're going to be running wild. And these people are going to run in the house and think that they say, from a lion, and they say, you know, you're going to see a bear in the house. Then, once you run in front of the back, it's going to be a snake on the ground. This stuff is crazy. But guess what? Most of us say, oh, it ain't going to happen to us. Jesus can protect me any way, any way in the world. You stupid if you think that way. The only way he's going to protect you and I get is in the wilderness. Because he's going to let this man do whatever he want to do. This is literal. This is not talking about no. This is not symbolic. You go into a zoo and see how fast a lion eats you. You go into a zoo and see how fast a bear eats you. Try it out if you don't think this little. Go ahead. Verse 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Yes, sir. Even very dark and no brightness in it. I tell you what, tonight, in the hood, go walk around with no light. And test yourself out, see how brave you are. And you hear some animals coming around. Or you hear people, sit tonight, see. This is literal, I'm telling you. Because the world that we're seeing now, with lights all over the place, it little, it's not going to be like this on the day of the Lord. It's not. That's why I'm trying to get your mind prepared to say, hey, I need to get my mind quick as I can once I see the man of sin sitting in the temple of God and rolling. I need to be rolling to that wilderness. Quick as I can, because this day is pain. Pain. Your money can't get you out of here. Your authority can't get you out of here. Only the way to get you out of here is understanding the book and recognizing your transportation. Let's keep moving. Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 20. You can finish with that. Yeah, one more verse, but if you want to go. No, let's go. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to hear that. Isaiah chapter 24. We're going to be in the end line of the book of Isaiah. I said, why ain't no Isaiah with this power? Yes. <laughs> we prepare mentally. Get out this mentality talking about, I got a life. I got a life, I want to live, I want to do this and that. No, your life is in this book. 
You live, you go by everything in this book, so you won't, you won't deliver your life to Satan at this time. Because he's the one that's going to have controlling power over the little amount of food, the little amount of water that we have at this time when this happens. And guess what? You're going to have to take that mark in your right hand and your forehead to get it. And you know you're done if you do that with God. Isaiah chapter 24 and verse 17. The day of the Lord we're talking about. We're going through some detailed things that will happen to you if you're walking upon this earth at this time. If you're not in a place of safety. If you're not here on the day of the Lord. Verse 17, go ahead. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon the O, in, o, o inhabitants of the earth. He said, fear in the pit. Because some people are going to be running and falling in pits. Falling in alleys where they trap. Or anywhere in the world where you go up and fall in there. And these animals and these people are going to have their way with you. No protection if you're not in this place. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. Mm -hmm. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. You understand what they're saying? You get out of this pit, and now something else coming to attack you once you get out of this pit. <coughs> this is destruction that's coming upon this earth. He's talking about these people and these animals going to come at you, and me, if I don't make it. Go ahead. For the windows from on high are open. Understand, it's going to be raining. The windows on high? He's talking about it's going to be raining, so you're going to be cold. You're going to be shivering. You're going to be hungry. You're going to need all this stuff. And you're going to say, man, why ain't nobody helping you? God is helping you now. He's telling you, get in that place. Don't take this for granted. Go ahead. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. They're going to earthquake again. Shake Go ahead. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. Yes, sir. And it shall fall and not rise again. Understand what he's saying about it? It shall, the earth shall move like a drunk, like a drunk man. Can't even hold himself up. Can't hold just going back and forth. He's trying to stand up on his earth. It's moving just that hard. And he said, it shall remove, be removed like a cottage. Meaning it's going to destroy houses. Destroy this stuff. And he said, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon them, and it shall fall and not rise. You know, a lot of people think this stuff going to be rebuilt. Rebuilt. Oh, we're going to go through the little, this a little bit right now. It's not going to be rebuilt right now. God going to destroy this thing down to the ground. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, mm -hmm. and kings on the earth, upon the earth. The, the high ones, you know, we talking about, that's your presidents. Your kings and queens like Chris Charles and Queen Elizabeth, all them, he going to bring them to their knees. Because they know what they're doing. How they're destroying this earth. Go ahead. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners and gathered in the pit. Wait a minute, gathered together as prisoners? They ain't going to have that protection like they think they're going to have. They ain't going to have it. Go ahead. And shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Yes, sir. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, and before his ancient glory. This is not the moon. He said the moon shall be confounded, and they ain't going to give his right light. The sun not going to give his right light. It's going to be darkness. This is our, our like, clue right here of what time this is. This is through the great tribulation period. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16. I want to make sure you understand I understand this day is nothing to be playing with. We don't come to the Bible saying this and say, oh yeah, we get together, fellowship and all this. No, we come here to learn. Let's see what else. Well, boy, he wrote, he wrote a lot of stuff about you and him. But listen to what this is talking about. Pay close attention to this one. What he's saying. Isaiah chapter 3, we'll start verse 16. Go ahead. Moreover, the Lord said, because of daughters.